This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. We have a complaint of a air conditioner that's not working for the dining room of this restaurant right now. So we are gonna jump into this. Looks like it's running at the moment, but this fan motor's not running. I don't know if that's bad or if it's just not cycling on right now. We'll have to uh, open this guy up. All right, we got a couple things going on here, but I opened it up and there's a big old burn on that contactor right there. That's not good. That looks like it's for compressor one. But the other thing is that we've got one condenser fan motor running, and then when I went to go open this panel up, this one shut off, one of these compressors. So there's no compressors running right now. And let's see. The fan motor is not locked up. Okay, it could very well be because of this electrical burn. Um, let's go right here. Now this has uh, compressor lockout boards. When they have compressor lockout boards, what you can do is check from X to C, and we have 24 volts from X to C. What that means is, is that we're off on compressor lockout. One of the compressors is off, either I'm moving it around right now, either because of a low pressure control or a freeze stat or a high pressure control. So obviously we're gonna have an issue here. So let's go ahead and uh, looks like this thing's trying, to, oh no, that's just being pulled backwards by the other fan motor. So we're gonna go ahead and power this guy down and we need to fix this electrical short first, figure out what happened here. Once we fix that, then uh, we can test further to find out if we have a bad fan motor or what's going on here. Also, this uh, combustion area right here is just a walking fire hazard. It's full of cobwebs and everything, so I went ahead and flicked the gas valve off and I'll shut the gas valve right here uh, and bring it to the customer's attention that they need to do a proper cleaning on this and start up and then inspection of the heat exchanger because you got some pretty good rusted out spots in there too. Um, but yeah, just to be safe, I shut off the gas because we don't want that to fire up and cause a fire. So, all right, I'm gonna grab me a new contactor. It looks like we need one with lugs and we'll have to figure out if we can reuse the wiring or what. All right, I was able to undo some zip ties, like two of them, and then pull this wire and run it on the bottom. It's not ideal, but I don't have any 10 gauge wire with me right now. So I was able to do that. So now we can go ahead and replace the contactor. Uh, this is a standard 24 volt with lugs. So I got a new one right here. We're gonna start replacing it. So let's go ahead and undo the top. Always what I suggest you do, <coughs> excuse me, the smoke is killing me right now. Always wanna take a picture before if you can of the wiring and stuff so that way you don't forget anything because even I forget stuff all the time. Looks like, for the most part, it goes color to color. Pull these guys up. There's that. There's that. So blue and brown are power in common for the coil voltage. It's like pretty much all the yellow wires go to one side, black wires go to the other. Yeah, man, this smoke is no joke right now. It's so like hard to breathe outside. Really shouldn't be working out here. Okay, so black goes to one side, yellow goes to the other, and it goes yellow and black here. It's two blacks on the left. Three yellows on the right. Man, this is tight. So this is a three-phase system, but Carrier puts two pole contactors in here. We don't know what caused the burn on the contactor. It looks to me like it was a loose wire. But then again, 
the lug is pretty tight in there. So who knows? Could be damage to the compressor, could be all kinds of things. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and mount this guy. Everything looks good in there. There was a little collateral damage on this wire right here. This looks like it's for a condenser fan motor and there's enough wire to cut off the burnt piece. So I'm gonna do that. Condenser fan motor wire right here. Don't know if this is the one that wasn't working or not, but there's like a burn mark right there. So we've got enough extra wire to cut it back. Put a connector on there and try to start this bad boy back up. Okay, this guy goes on this connector right here. Okay, I will clean all these wires up. I just want to see if this stuff works. So, put that back, put that back. Everything's safe, everything's out of the way. We're going to turn it on and see if anything blows up. Standing back out of the way. Compressors turn on, one's running. Two's running. This condenser fan motor's not running, but both compressors are running. Okay, that's a good sign. Let it run for a sec. This guy. I'll we'll have to check uh, voltage and then check the capacitor. So we know that we have voltage because the other condenser fan motor's running. They're wired to the same place. Both condenser fan motors get power from the same relay and they both share the same common. So I'm gonna pull this capacitor out right here and dig in there and see if there's something going on in the capacitor. Seven microfarads. So the capacitor is uh, going bad, but I don't know if I trust that motor. I'm probably gonna go pick up a capacitor and a motor just to be safe. All right, I picked up a new capacitor. It's a dual run 1010. We're gonna fire this guy up and see how that motor does. Um, I also picked up a motor. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna replace it. I talked to the customer and they were kind of okay with preventatively replacing it no matter what, but I just wanna kind of see where it's at. So let's turn it on. Uh, everything's clear. Yeah, condenser fan motor's trying to start even with the new cap and it's not going and we know it has power because it's powered from the same power as the other condenser fan motor. I'm gonna get in here and test it. Yeah, I pulled it open, tested here and at the relay and we have power and the condenser fan motor's not running so we're gonna go ahead and swap this guy out. Got a little rust buster, just a penetrating oil. Set it on there, let it sit while I'm getting my wrench. I always keep a little extra sandpaper in my tool bag for just this. I bought a blade, what the heck? I'm fighting with it for no reason. So All right, so I went ahead and shortened the other condenser fan motor too. So that way we don't have a bunch of wires bundled up underneath, getting in our way. So it's all the right, correct length now. Everything goes right here, nice and good. It's like I could have gone just a little bit shorter, so I'll pull a little bit more up here and just run one zip tie right here. Heck, I don't even need to run a zip tie. I'll just put a piece of tape. But this way, we don't have a crap ton of stuff dangling, touching lines or anything like that. Okay, so this guy's ready to start back up. Everything's safe. Blades where it needs to be. 
we're gonna fire it up and see what happens all right uh, I still need to put some screws in this but I think I can do that after the fact so here goes nothing condenser fan motors running like they should be everything's good everything's safe wires are shortened all right, we're gonna put the panels on and do our, actually I'm gonna power it down real quick. We'll put the panels on, but first I'm gonna do a um, analysis of the refrigeration system. All right, I got my probes hooked up, all right? And I'm using the new large pipe clamp, the JL3LC. All right, that thing's meant for seven eighths all the way up to, I think, oh, three inches, four inches. It's a big clamp and it basically has large, large, capacity so but yeah same same construction meant to uh you know score the line if it's not on there nice and neat all right so the first stage is uh we're set up as a piston 10 to 12 sear r22 superheat's not too bad our targets are a little high meaning that our actual pressures are a little bit low than what the targets are um, as usual, this unit has airflow problems and uh, it's also pulling a bunch of outside air because the economizer is bad, so it's just manually opened. Um, you'll see it in the temperature split. There's almost a 30 degree temperature split, 29 degrees. Uh, airflow, that's not calculated correctly. Let me set that up. Go back to the beginning. I never, never. Uh, profile the system let's see what this is sometimes it'll say it right here it's a 10 ton uh, on the charging chart on the side it'll often say what it is so we're gonna go to system info let's see what the estimated airflow is we're gonna change it to package unit we're gonna go to BTUs we're gonna change it to BTUs we're gonna change it to 10 ton and we're not a TXV, we're going to change it to a fixed orifice and we're going to hit submit. All right, so this is what we're looking at. Uh, I mean, it's kind of okay, it's getting better as it's stabilizing out. 100 degrees outside, temperature split still 30 degrees, but again, it's pulling a lot of outside air, so that's why. Airflow is on the low side. The indoor blower assembly is pretty dirty, I noticed. So let's see what Measure Quick has to say. Airflow is low. I'm going to clear the system unstable. It's saying airflow is low, and I agree with that. Airflow is low on this. Again, guys, this is something these customers usually don't want to dive into too much. Okay, we're going to jump onto the second stage now and see how that's doing. So the second stage is kind of looking about the same. I'm not too worried about it. It's looking okay. That TD is going to be high, but that's because pulling outside air. Temperature splits high. I'm not a fan of that, but yeah. It's not going to be perfect. I think that's good enough for here. We're going to go ahead and wrap this one up. I did check current draw on the motor. It's running good. So I just need to put all the screws back in the panels. I checked the belt tightness. The belt's good. I had taken this off. I need to put screws back in that, but they'll be happy now. Just so you guys have some context, this video was actually shot back in, right at the beginning of the summer of 2020. Um, I found this in my hard drive. I had forgotten about it actually. So that's why I was complaining about the smoke and the fires. And if you l uh, heard or paid attention to what was on Measure Quick, it was 100 degrees outside. Currently right now, it's April 17th of 21. We haven't quite hit 100 degrees out here. And currently, cross our fingers, we don't have any fires going at the moment, okay? So, um, you know, this was a basic service call, just a normal air conditioning service call. There was a few things going on. It's really important to not get you know, tunnel vision and not pay attention to everything else that you might potentially come up on. You know, obviously you want to use your senses. Um, you know, I noticed that the combustion area was full of cobwebs and stuff, and I didn't find or didn't feel comfortable leaving uh, it capable of firing up in heat mode. So I went ahead and turned off the gas. Um, and on a side note, because this was before um, the summer, 
we went through the entire winter and the customer still, cause I did bring up to the customer, but now that we're in April of 21, I never went out there and turned that gas back on. So that furnace or that heater hasn't ran all this past winter. It was one of those things, you know, you bring it up to the customer and, you know, and tell them, Hey, we need to PM this thing. And they never have us do it. But granted for majority of the winter, they didn't have people in their, their dining rooms. You know, we just barely opened up our dining rooms. I think we're at 50% capacity now. Um, where they're allowed to fill people, fill the dining rooms up to 50% capacity, but that just happened. So here we are coming into the summer again. Um, but anyways, whole nother thing going off on a tangent there, but you know, situational awareness, paying attention to everything that's really important. So, um, you know, went through some basic troubleshooting steps. Now I didn't show schematics or anything like that, but I mean the basic sequence of operation thermostat, you know, senses whatever temperature it desires to turn itself on or off. So, you know, and it sends a power up to the unit turns on cooling and the unit wasn't cooling essentially. Okay. So I was able to walk myself through there. There's some pressure switches and stuff like that. It was pretty easy, um, you know, to, to work my way through because I'm very familiar with the unit. Okay. It's always important. You want to understand the sequence of operation of the equipment you're working on. So that way you can better diagnose. Okay. So we changed the contactor. Then we moved on, found the condenser fan motor wasn't working. We did check power, but then we tested the capacitor to see if that would work. The capacitor was low. It was a dual capacitor, even though I only showed one reading, they were both reading low. Um, went ahead and changed the capacitor. The motor still didn't work. We tested voltage again, confirmed it was bad, changed the motor. Um, I left that little part in about sanding the condenser fan motor blade off because sometimes that happens, you know. Uh, halfway through, I realized, hey, dummy, why are you sanding this blade off? You've got a brand new blade. There's no point. You know, sometimes I do that kind of stuff. I get caught up in the moment. So, but also understanding that this unit was not performing at a hundred percent of its capabilities. Okay. Um, airflow was a big issue on it. And I've said it so many times, it comes across all the time on the commercial side with these restaurants. We always have airflow issues and majority of the time they do not want to address the issues. Okay. Uh, we bring it up to them saying, Hey, you know what? This unit's not doing as good as it should be. But, you know, it's going to cost X number of dollars to fix, to replace the duct system, to to change the plenum. You know, majority of the time, the problem is actually at the plenum um, because, uh, you know, they have a plenum and it's too small or there's not enough taps on it, you know, issues like that. But most of the time, the customer's like, eh, it's working, you know, the to them the expense to repair the duct work or upgrade the duct system just isn't worth it. So, hey, you know, what? I can only do what they want me to do. I give them the information and they choose what they want to do there. OK, um, so with that being said, we have to understand and be able to interpolate and say, you know what? This unit is doing the best that it can. OK, that's where the importance of the term benchmarking comes in. OK, whether you're using an app or something like that to be able to set a guideline for the next service technician and say, this is how this unit should be operating. Um, being the conditions that it has, this is the best that it can do because there's nothing worse than the service technician after you trying to chase out a problem who may not be as experienced as you to be able to say, Hey, there's a ductwork issue, you know, or he's trying to meet certain numbers or get some certain performance when the unit just simply won't do it without the ductwork. So at my company, we utilize electronic invoicing and we have all of our information in our invoicing system and we have history so we can go through and see the last technician service notes. We can read the invoices and say, hey, Chris was here. He said this unit is underperforming because of duct work. So therefore, you know, they can, you know, not chase down a ghost essentially. OK. Um, I really, really appreciate you guys making it to the end of the video. I say this all the time, but I truly do. It is so humbling to have the comments and the support and the emails that you guys give me. Thank you so very much. It is amazing. Um, it's just awesome. Okay. If you guys haven't already, check out my website, hvacrvideos.com. Uh, you can pick up hats, shirts, all that good stuff. Um, other ways you can support me uh, via Patreon. There's links in the show notes of this video, YouTube channel memberships, PayPal donations. Um, yeah, all of that helps. Okay. I really do appreciate you guys. Uh, remember, I go live Monday evenings, 5 p.m. Pacific on YouTube, as long as I can get off work. And then I also go live on the HVAC Overtime channel with my buddies uh, Friday evenings about 6.05 p.m. Pacific. And we just kind of recap the week. So um, again, appreciate you guys and uh, we will catch you on the next one. Okay.